Hi, this is the Friday Evening Tropical Tidbit for May 15th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. We're continuing to track Invest 90L here, our disturbance just southeast of the Florida Keys this evening. This has moved slowly northeastward from where it was last night near the North Cuban coastline, and this is going to continue slowly to the north or northeast tonight and tomorrow, ending up uh, just north of the northern Bahamas by tomorrow night and uh, potentially up east of Jacksonville by sometime Sunday morning. And this remains a pretty sloppy, large, and disorganized system, uh, typical of these early season developments that come from non-tropical sources. We continue to have a large mass of rain to the east of this system. Again, the surface center is kind of here on the dry side in the southwestern corner of this whole region of disturbed weather. And the mid-level center of rotation is a little bit farther north over the southeastern Florida coast coastline. We have had most of the convection to the north and east of the surface low today where we've had rain raking southeast Florida from time to time where localized spots have had a few inches of rain today. Now as we can see on water vapor satellite imagery the upper level trough over this system which is a little bit hard to see here but the axis of this upper level trough is beginning to move overhead of where the surface low is and this is dramatically decreasing the strength of the upper level winds over the system and therefore wind shear is coming down substantially lower than it was earlier today and yesterday and this will continue through tomorrow and our system will likely find itself in an area of much lower shear as it comes up east of the Florida coastline. And what this should allow is for the surface low to creep northward into the midst of this field of mid-level moisture, allowing it to be a little closer to the convection that has been primarily confined to its east and north today. By tomorrow night and Sunday morning, we should see it more centralized with more convection around it on all sides instead of just to the east. And at that point, it may start to be able to look a little bit more subtropical. The key development in the evolution of the system is going to be its separation from this warm front that continues to extend out to the east here. Again, we have this really warm, moist southeast flow coming into this warm front that is pushing northward here attached to 90L. This remains a non-tropical storm as long as this warm front is attached to it. Now eventually this warm front will push northward far enough so that it kind of leaves this low behind a little bit. By the time it's up here east of Jacksonville, it may be what we call secluded off in more of a circular bubble of moisture that is a little bit more separate from the rest of this mess off to the east. And at that point, once this attains a more or less circular structure, it's going to start acquiring more tropical-like characteristics because at that point, it will not be feeding off of the warm front, but instead feeding off of the tropical thunderstorms that are firing around it. And at that point, we may see this attain the name Arthur if the NHC considers it a subtropical or tropical cyclone. We can see the environment this is going to move into over the next few days on the GFS where the upper level flow on Sunday morning shows our low again east of Jacksonville at about this time. And we see this large region of quiescent flow aloft, light flow here, very low wind shear in general, which again should allow some thunderstorms to start firing around the center of this as it moves to the north or northeast. And this will continue to be the case through Monday. If we look at the mid-level moisture field on the GFS at the same time, we can start to see indications of this bubble of mid-level moisture starting to isolate itself away from the warm front off to the northeast, which is now pushed a little bit farther away from where 90L is centered. And again, at this point, we may start to see a more circular region of moderate to deep convection percolating in a scattered way around the vortex. The water does get colder as this comes northward, so we're not expecting a massive explosion of thunderstorms around this, and this is not likely to look like a typical tropical storm as it begins this process. But scattered convection around the circulation will likely start to make this look a little bit more like a subtropical storm than a non-tropical storm. And it will likely intensify gradually due to those thunderstorms beginning to form around the center. Again, the cooler water may limit this depending on exactly how much interaction it has with the Gulf Stream, which is a tongue of slightly warmer water, but still cooler than what it has down here near Florida and the Bahamas. 
In addition, as this cyclone begins to strengthen, this mass of dry air to the northwest is likely to get pulled in and wrapped around at some point into the cyclone's circulation, and that may also play a role in limiting the amount of convection that can occur within the circulation. Between that and the cooler water, I expect that this will likely not rapidly intensify, but will likely gradually intensify on its way northeastward, making its closest approach to the Outer Banks of North Carolina sometime Monday afternoon based on current forecasts forecasts. Some models get this a little closer to North Carolina than others. This particular GFS run gets a little bit closer than most other models here, enough to bring the moisture field and some rain bands on shore as this passes off of the Outer Banks as what would likely be a subtropical storm here on this particular model. Looking at some of the other track models, most of them are pretty far offshore. The GFS in red here is the closest one to the coast, but this is not expected to make landfall on the eastern seaboard and is currently expected to be offshore. It's just how far offshore is really the question. Could it be close enough to bring some rough weather and rain banding and gusty winds to the beaches of North Carolina? Very possible, but it's equally possible that this is far enough offshore that there is no rough weather of any kind except for potentially elevated swells and rip currents near the coast. This will continue northeastward after that point and may become a non-tropical storm once more as an upper level trough kind of comes into New England and interacts with the storm on its way northeastward. So in general, this continues to be a disorganized slop for the moment with rain continuing over southeast Florida and the northern Bahamas tonight, likely ending in Florida sometime tomorrow as the system starts to pull northeastward and uh, will potentially bring no more impact to the U.S. with the exception of coastal North Carolina where it's possible some rough weather could occur if this track's close enough, uh, but at this point it's still uncertain uh, just how far offshore this will track. So we'll keep a general eye on this throughout the weekend. Stay tuned to your local NWS office for details on any local impacts to you. For now, mostly beneficial rainfall in parts of Florida that need it. All right, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching.